Hey there, Spark fans. Rob Reynolds here once again. Lately, we've been putting in a lot of time on global positioning here at Spark Fun. And why not? The technology has advanced now to the point where you and I can track location down to a couple of centimeters. It's amazing. Uh, I'm working on a GNSS project right now that should release in a few weeks. Earlier today, I was walking past Nathan's desk, you know, our Queso Grande, and he stopped me to show me the global positioning stuff that he's working on. So cool, so exciting. And I'm sure that you want to get in on this action, right? Well, as is our want here at SparkFun, we're making that easier for you with a new pair of function boards for our Micromod ecosystem. Let me share with you the new Micromod GNSS Function Board Neo M9N and the Micromod GNSS Function Board ZF9P. Now, both of these modules are ones we've previously released on different boards, but I still want to run through the specs just to make sure we're all on the same page. The Neo M9N is a 92-channel GNSS receiver with 1.5 meter accuracy and a 25 hertz refresh rate on four concurrent GNSS systems. Its cold time to first fix is 24 seconds, with a hot time to first fix at two seconds. However, with the onboard rechargeable battery, you have backup power even when the unit's powered down, allowing for a hot fix almost all the time. The board offers a maximum working altitude of 80,000 meters and a maximum velocity of 500 meters per second, with a velocity accuracy of five centimeters per second. All of this while drawing only about 36 milliamps while tracking all four satellite constellations, 31 milliamps whilst tracking GPS and GLONASS, and about 27 milliamps when relying solely on GPS. A 1x3 header is populated on the board, which includes a two-pin selectable jumper when selecting communication protocol between SPY or serial I2C. For advanced users, there are jumpers to disable the right protection for the EEPROM, disconnecting the pull-up resistors, and placing the module in safe boot mode. A U.FL connector is provided to connect a GNSS antenna of your choice to the module, and it supports NMEA, UBX, and RTCM protocols over UART or I2C interface. Like the Neo M9N, the ZF9P also allows for concurrent reception of GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, and Beidou signals. It's also the first module without a multi-thousand dollar price tag that can receive not only the L1 band, but also the more recent L2 band. It'll operate at either 5 or 3.3 volts, however all logic is 3.3, and it only draws about 35 milliamps, which of course will vary a bit depending on the constellations and tracking state. It offers horizontal positional accuracy of about 2.5 meters without the aid of real-time kinematics, but utilize RTK and your accuracy gets down to about 10 millimeters. That's like the width of my thumbnail. Its maximum operating altitude is 50 kilometers, or about 31 miles, and its max operating speed is 500 meters per second, or a bit over 1,100 miles per hour. The function board includes a USB-C connector for powering and programming the ZF9P directly. The board also includes a selection of 0.1-inch spaced PTH pins for signals not connected to the Micromod M.2 connector, including UART2, Geofence, and RTK status signals, as well as the ZF9P interrupt and reset pins. We've even included a rechargeable backup battery to keep the latest module configuration and satellite data available for up to two weeks. Now, this battery helps warm start the module, decreasing time to first fix dramatically. The module features a survey in mode, allowing the module to become a base station and produce RTCM 3.x correction data. The number of configuration options of the ZF9P is incredible. A geofencing, variable I2C address, variable update rates, even the high precision RTK solution can be increased to 20 Hz. The Micromod GNSS carrier board even has five communications ports, four of which are all active simultaneously. USB-C, which enumerates as a COM port, UART1 with 3.3 volt TTL, UART2 for RTCM reception with 3.3 volt TTL, I2C, and SPI. As previously mentioned, because of the Micromod M.2 connector, the ZF9P's UART1, SPI, and I2C parts are available without soldering. And a U.FL connector is there for you to add an external antenna. Here at SparkFun, we try to offer good, better, and best options for a lot of our product lines so that people can come in at different price points, and that's what we've done here. I need to do a quick proof of concept build? Use the Neo M9N function board. And once you've got that working the way you want, you want to fine tune it, maybe get a little more accuracy, pop out that function board, pop in the ZF9P, and that'll get you down to centimeter, if not millimeter, accuracy. And because they're both UBlox modules and they use the same Arduino library, you won't even need a code change as long as you're using the same processor board. I mean, maybe a slight tweak here and there, but for the most part, pop it in, pop it out. If that doesn't put the rapid in rapid prototyping, I don't know what does. 
Now, I did mention that both of these boards have a U.FL connector. They will both need an external antenna, the Neo M9N, the L1 antenna, and for the ZF9P, the dual band antenna. You can take a look on the product pages and we'll give you suggestions on what antennas you should get for each. So start adding GNSS to your Micromod builds with the new Micromod GNSS Function Board Neo M9N or the Micromod GNSS Function Board ZF9P. Pick them up over at sparkman.com and please stay safe, be kind, and happy hacking. Here at SparkFun, we've been putting in a lot. We've been? We've been. That'll give you decent. And why not? It's gotten to the point now. I want to say the technology. Nah, they don't need to know that. I mean, that's useless information. It was kind of sketchy at best anyway up to that point. So waiting for me to just about finish and embark. I know, right? <laughs>